I wanted to give you a little introduction to material presets and shaders and how we can use them to make our objects look different than they currently do. So material presets and shaders, they work similarly, but they're not the same thing. And I think this is the main thing I'd like you to understand, that a shader can be applied to any surface and it describes how a surface looks. It's technically, I believe, a script under the hood and it tells the render engine how shiny an object needs to be or how reflective, what textures on it, what colors, on it and so forth. It can also describe geometrical changes with the help of displacement and bump maps and normal maps. Material presets work very much the same way, but the difference is that they work on a per object basis rather than on a per surface basis. So it sounds really abstract when I say that, but one object could have multiple surfaces. So I could have a hat that I've shown you in the previous episode that may have a headband and it has a kind of a flower on it or something. Those are two different surfaces. On a t-shirt I could have a pocket that has a different material than a button or the rest of it or maybe like there's a seam or something that has a different material than something else. Or on a belt you could imagine that the buckle is metal and the rest of it is maybe made from leather. So those are two material zones on one object and a shader would describe a zone and it doesn't matter what zone that is. It just it doesn't care what it what that zone is named. It can be applied on any zone no matter what it's called. Whereas a material preset can only be used on the object that it was made for. So Das Studio would say, hey, I'm using three different shaders on three different surfaces on this particular object. And a material preset would describe that object and the shaders for those surfaces. But that material preset wouldn't work for something else. So you can imagine a material preset for trousers might not work on a hat or something that describes a t-shirt might not work on a person because, you know, the person doesn't have whatever belt buckle defined. It, however, has other things defined that the belt doesn't have. A little example is in order, I hear you say. So I'll stick with the lady from the previous example here. She's still wearing the hat and the hat itself comes with material presets. In the Smart Content tab, we head over to Materials here, and then in here we have iRay. That is where we find iRay material presets. We may have something that is undefined, that is usually then for the 3D Lite. Sometimes we even have a 3D Lite category, kind of depends on the object. Under iRay we have something called Accessories, and that describes the hat. So if I go and double click anything in here that I can see that multiple things about the hat change. So it kind of turns pink and it's all tone and tone, but I can see that the flower here now has a pink shiny plastic and we have a different kind of flower pattern. That's actually the same flower pattern that we had before, but it's all in a different color. So there's also one in mauve here and there's one in green. So I can see that multiple things change at the same time. So here I can see that this turns darker, but this turns lighter. Whereas here, that's the other way around. This turns lighter and this turns darker. And the shininess and the translucency on the flower is a little, little bit different and so forth. So as a demonstration then, if I go and create myself a cube primitive, one meter by one meter should be fine. And I'll go and move that out of the way a little bit. If I go and select my cube and then double click this material preset here, I'm not exactly surprised that the cube doesn't actually change. And that's because that material preset, as it says materials here, is made for the hat and not for the cube. So let me try this again with a different one. Now it also doesn't work. Dang, that's, that's a shame, isn't it? Yeah, so that's one of those things to be aware of. It's the same if I go and select her top, and this happens to all of us accidentally that we select something, we think, hey, we want to apply a material preset here and nothing changes. And I'm thinking, is the product broken? No, it's just because that material preset is made for the object that's currently selected. If you were to delve into help, troubleshooting view log file, you would see the error messages that Das Studio generates to say, hey, I've tried, but it just didn't work out. It just doesn't flag this up in the user interface. A shader, on the other hand, works differently. And let me go and demonstrate this on my cube object. So shaders, if you see this here, this all says materials here, and that means this is a material preset. But if you go, if I go and look for something else in my 
product library here. Let me go and untick the filter by context box over here so that I can see the whole list of things. And let me go into my shader section down here. I can see a list of products that now contain shaders. Could be hair products, could be clothing products, could be generic products that are literally only shader products. Like these ones here, these are black and white shaders. There's also very nice ones by Diane. They're called Fabtex. They're very nice, but you can get all kinds of shaders from the DAS store. I'll go and just stick with these here, the monochrome iRay shaders, just because they're very nice to demonstrate this with. So with my cube object still selected, if I were to try and apply a shader and just double click this, I can see nothing happens still. Why is that then? Well, it's because I have an object selected, but I don't have a surface of an object selected. So again, this is something that we need to understand. If you select an object and apply a material preset, the material preset will find the zones it's designed for automatically. But a shader doesn't know which zone you're referring to. So if I go back to my cube, it only has one zone. Currently, none of them are selected. And conversely, the shader doesn't know where should I go. So there's something here in our tool section that's called the surface selection tool. This is what it looks like. You can also find it under the tools section here under surface selection or shift M is the appropriate shortcut key. And if you select that and you hover over an object, it will show you the various material zones that are defined on the object. So this is now the face of my character. This is now the hat and the hat itself also has that ribbon and it has that flower. And on my cube, I have, I just got something that's called default. And this orange highlighting thing here, that is actually something that some of you will experience when they have the universal manipulator selected. So mine doesn't do this, but in case it annoys the hell out of you like it does me, there's something under the draw settings tab that lets you disable this. And that is under general. If you open that up, the first item here is the highlight style. So I'm so sorry if I'm jumping back and forth here, but on the universal manipulator, if you have a look at the highlight style, there are these two options here, bounding box and surface or bounding box only. So if you have that set to bounding box and surface, which is the default, then you will find that as you move over objects, they all kind of flash up and they highlight all the surfaces of that object at one point. And if you've been working with that studio and you move around the viewport a lot and you see this and it annoys you, then this is a way to disable that. So if you change this from bounding box and surfaces to bounding box only, then that flashing is no longer going to happen. Just an aside there. Because I personally find that it doesn't really make sense unless I have a very cluttered scene and I do need to see which object needs to highlight. I'd, I'd like to not see that. However, if I'm using the surface selection tool, then I want for this to happen. So with that, I really need to see what is a surface and where is it so that I can then go and select it and apply material on that. So if I go and stick with the cube, I'll go and hover over that and then just left click on the correct surface, then that'll be locked in. I can head over to my surfaces tab and I can see that this is where that surface has actually been selected. So once again, if I go over to my character here, my character has a lot more surfaces here. If I go and hover over my character and just select the face and click, then I can see that this is now the surface that has been selected. Let me go and find that. There we go. Those are all the surfaces of my character. If I go and select this, that's the torso, then that's that. If I select that, then these are the arms, that's that might take a moment to show up here, but this is essentially what these surfaces are and where to find them. You can also select them the other way around. So if I wanted to go and select the surfaces from here, I can do that. Those are the ears and that's where they are lighting up there in the viewport. That's the ears. Or if I go and say, well, this is the face, then that's the face. We now just see the outline of it. And that's how I can select surfaces. And once I have selected a surface, I'll go back over to my cube here. So left click on that cube and go back to my smart content. If I now go and apply a shader, now it will get loaded on that surface that is selected. So that's important to understand. If you want to apply a shader, use the surface selection tool, find the surface, left click it, and then double click a shader to apply it. This is important because some clothing products, as well as hair products, they come with shaders nowadays rather than only material presets. So always check what type of thing it is that you want to apply there. So now I can go ahead, because my surface is still selected, I can just go double click other shaders and I can see that the surfaces of my object seem to change. And that's, that's kind of nice.
With this, let me go and stick with the pattern like this. On the Surfaces tab, this is where all these things are described, as in how is this thing actually built. Default, or like at the very top here, this is the name of my object. Then below that is the amount of surfaces that this object has. So in this case, default is what a surface is called when I create a primitive in Dash Studio. But that name can be changed with something called the Geometry Editor. You can even set up multiple material zones on an object with the Geometry Editor. Usually when items are created in the 3D Editor, you use this 3D Editor to create those surfaces and then import that object into Dash Studio and it'll have its surfaces intact. But if you ever needed to create separate surface zones that is possible in Dash Studio. On here we have the various channels that make up the description of the object. So we have a base channel here and that has subcategories like glossy, then there's the bump channel, there's also the geometry channel here that makes the object transparent or less transparent like we've seen before. And then on the geometry channel also, just so that we've seen that if I open that up there's something called tiling. And this one is an interesting one because it describes how often a texture is repeated across an object. So if you had a character with a skin texture, you don't want that repeated at all. But if you had something like my cube here, I don't really mind using this pattern and just repeating it less or more so that I see a different effect that happens on the cube. So as an example, if I go and alt left click on the slider then the number four goes back to its default value of one and that means i only see my texture applied once and that makes my cube look very different but usually the generic shaders are created so that the textures often are allowed to tile themselves seamlessly so that they look okay like you know if i'm thinking of a large grassy landscape and i have a patch of grass that is tileable i could go and stretch it all over a larger surface and then make the grass tile and then within reason it doesn't look like there's blocky grass all over it just repeats it and then it appears to have a higher density so if i go and change this back to i think it was four if i go and set this to 10 now on horizontal and on vertical, then I see that my cube looks very different now. And that's kind of nice. So I can do that on the tiling tab under the geometry section. We've spoken about cutout that makes things less transparent. There's also on the glossy tab here under glossy roughness, you can change how rough an object is. One means it's completely rough, zero means it's completely shiny. And depending on your object, that might be something you want to override. There's so much that you can adjust in here. And it's so complicated because creating a shader is, is a complicated business. There's a lot of properties like, you know, translucency, like how much light is allowed to enter an object and scatter around inside it and maybe even leave it again and so forth. So we're not going to go into too much detail. Usually when we apply a shader, that's Kind of my point here, we have to go and select a surface rather than just the object. Because when I do that, it's just not going to work. Shaders are also going to work on clothing, and this is what makes them very powerful. So if I already had several material presets with my hat, but I wanted to override that, I can go and use these shaders on the hat as well. So if I say this, this hat here, it has multiple material zones. If I'm thinking of the band here, if I, with my surface selection tool, select the band, and then go and double click any of these shaders so like this one, then I can see that I've changed my object to something that it wasn't designed to look like. So I'm kind of, you know, I'm a clothing designer now to a certain extent that is. So I might leave the flower in place, but maybe change the type of hat here to something like this. And you know, while that looks terrible, I can now go ahead and head over to the surfaces tab. That's the hat, that's the thing that I've selected. And maybe something with a smaller pattern might be better. So I can go under the geometry section, under tiling, and then I'll change this from four to maybe eight. See what that looks like. You can also go and tile this non-uniformly. If you wanted to play with the slider, you can go and get yourself an idea of what this looks like. It looks like something is alive there. But play around with this and see how you can what you can come up with. So there are so many shaders, like maybe this wasn't a great demonstration for the hat. If I wanted to turn this into a leather cap, for example, I could just select it and then select the leather shader. There's other shaders that come with Dash Studio, actually, they're on the presets tab here. While we're here with the surface selected, I could head over to the presets section. And then there's this here, shaders. And under shaders, I have eye ray and there's tons of default shaders in here. So there's a fabric shaders here. Uh, some of them are installed here. Emissive shaders, there's an effect shader. That's the volumetric shader. Then there's concrete and ceramic. There is also leather here. 
So if I go and double click leather on this, then I can see that my hat's kind of trying to change itself into leather. Uh, once again, I think the texture itself is a little bit too large for the hat, but we know how to change that, right? I can just go into the horizontal tiles and make that a little bit bigger. Maybe 10 was too big, so maybe I'll try six. And I've made myself a leather hat. If I don't want for that to be brown, if I want that to be green, I can head over to the base channel and then change the base color here to something else. Maybe something much darker, maybe also something with more saturation. And there we go. So that's, that kind of changes the look and feel of objects. So yes, material presets will work when you use the regular universal manipulator and select an object that a material preset was designed for, and then just double click it. A shader, on the other hand, you need to use the surface selection tool, then hover over the object, select the surface that you'd like to change, and then apply a shader to that. And then, you know, you can change the appearance of your objects. So this gets you a lot of mileage out of existing objects you already have, like clothing and props. If you want to change the appearance of that, you can really go to town with that. In the next few chapters, we're going to have a look at how to adjust clothing. So not so much the appearance, but literally the way clothing sometimes intersects with the figure. And we're going to have a look at how to do this inside Das Studio, but we're also going to have a look at external tools that make our job so much easier. Stay tuned for that.